Hello. I thought I would give you guys a walkthrough as to the software side of using your Arduinos. So, first thing I'm going to show you is the Arduino programming environment. Um, this is a pretty, uh, pretty simplified programming environment where you actually write code, the code runs on your Arduino, and it makes your Arduino do things. So. Um, I'm a programmer for, for my job, and I, I write code like this all day, but of course I have a lot more tools, a lot, lot more complex um, uh, programming environments, but I'm also doing some more complex stuff. Using the Arduino is simple, and it's supposed to be simple, so they have a simple interface. So I should show you a few things about how this works. Um, here's the program that I wrote for using the IR sensor that I gave you in your kits. Um, you can see at the top of the program I have a couple uh, constants defined. Um, const means it's constant, which means its value doesn't change. Int means it's an integer. So if you've learned about different types of numbers, uh, integers means that it, it has no fractional component. It's not a fraction or a decimal. It's one, two, three, four, five, so on. It could also be negative or zero. Um, so I have a couple of these defined. Uh, another integer, but this one is not constant, which means it can change. Um, and then there's the two main uh, functions that are inside this program. Every Arduino program will have these two functions, one called setup and one called loop. Setup runs as soon as you upload your program and your Arduino starts running and it runs once. Loop will continue running so long as your Arduino has power. So setup runs as soon as your Arduino gets power and has the program loaded up and loop will just continue running and it'll, it'll repeat again and again and again so that's really where all your code in your program is. So we can see in the first part of the program um, I have this line which says serial begin and what that does is it, it allows you to use this button to see what it is that your program is doing. Um, you can see I'm writing back sensor values here uh, for what's going on. So anytime you want to see what your program is doing you can hit serial monitor this button up here and it'll show you what your sensor is reading. Um, uh, that's where this gets set up right there in that line and then I actually write the, to those lines down here in loop but we'll get to that in a second. The next two lines I have inside of setup are setting the pins, the green pin and the red pin to output. Now green pin and red pin if you see were these integers I defined up here. One is eight, one is nine. These are the actual pins that you're plugging wires into on your Arduino. So uh, when you see in the diagram that you're supposed to have uh, your, your cables plugged into pins eight and nine, that's why. If you ever want to plug them into different, different pins, all you have to do is change these values, recompile, re-upload to the Arduino, and make sure you move your pins on the Arduino. So what these two uh, statements here are saying is it's saying set these to output so I can write to these things. I can either set them high for high voltage or low to uh, zero voltage. So let's get down to the loop. And remember, this is something that happens continuously as your Arduino is running. The first thing I do is I read the sensor value. The sensor value I get by a, a function called analog read that reads in analog in pin analog in pin you see I he have here defined as zero. So this is the pin that your uh, infrared sensor is going to be connected to. Um, one, one of the many pins. You'll, you'll notice there's, there's four wires coming out of your sensor. Two of them are simply used to power uh, an LED and two of them are going to be used for the emitter but we use what's called a voltage divider and that's where the the input for the voltage divider goes. So long as you follow the schematic, you don't have to understand what any of what I just said means. So, um, in, in any case, we read this in, it's an integer value, and it's going to be a number between 0 and 1023. Just because that's, uh, there's a mathematical reason for that, and you guys can figure that out on your own. Um, after that, we write out to our serial, which is actually our USB cable, uh, what that value was simple line that says sensor equal and then gives the, the value and that's when I click here you'll see this scrolling down the screen each time this this line gets written out that means that our Arduino has gone through this loop function once um, after that we have a couple uh, if else statements here these are simple programming constructs that you find in code all the time 
uh, and it's very simple. We just say, hey, if sensor value is greater than 500, turn green pin to high. If it's not greater than 500, so 499 or lower, turn green pin to low. When we set green pin to high by calling this digital write function, it will turn on the green LED. Um, and when we set it to low, it will turn it off. So every time through the loop, it decides whether or not it needs to turn that green LED on or whether it needs to turn it off. The same is true for the red LED. So I have red pin here and here, and I'm writing it high and low. The only difference is this time I'm checking the sensor value to see not if it's greater than 500, but if it's greater than 800. So if it's greater than 500 but less than 800, only the green pin will be on. If it's greater than both 500 and 800, both will be on. If it's less than 500, neither will be on. And um, the last function that I call from my, my loop function is delay of 10. Um, what this means is to delay 10 milliseconds. So a millisecond is a one thousandth of a second, therefore 10 milliseconds is a one one hundredth of a second. So this loop, uh, assuming nothing else here takes any time, will run a uh, hundred times per second. Of course it's going to be a little less than that because all of these instructions here take some time too. Um, but uh, that's, that's programming in its basic form. And this is uh, really cool programming. This is stuff that people only used to be able to learn in college when, when they get to uh, actually programming things directly to hardware rather than just doing it, um, you know, interacting with the operating system. In this case, you're really interacting directly with what we call the bare metal of the chip that's on that Arduino. So it's, it's really cool. That's one of the reasons I, I wanted you guys to have these things. Um, so that's, that's the, the software component of this. Um, the hardware component, I can go over real quick. Uh, here is a program that I use to design things like breadboards, and this is uh, what helped me design your circuit. Um, I have an image of this included in the zip file that uh, I'll, I, I suppose I'll link to it in this um, video as well, but uh, the zip file I gave you. So you can look at this in more detail, but I'll just go over the basics of it. Um, first off, the red and black wires, uh, red is positive, black is negative or ground, we're just going to call it ground. Um, connect those up to your power rails so that anything along this line is tied to this red wire and anything along this line is tied to this black wire. Uh, that will allow you to uh, supply all your components with power. Make sure it's coming out of the 5 volt for the red and the ground pin for the black. Um, and you can use whatever color wires you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, next part is hooking up this yellow wire to pin 0. Because if you remember in our program, pin 0 is the analog pin. That's where we're reading things from. So it's going to read the voltage at this point. Um, when I call this a voltage divider, I'll show you what that means. It means if we trace this circuit right here from the positive, and we go down this wire, um, we run into this resistor, and then we run into uh, uh, this um, other, this half of the IR sensor. This blue and white wires are actually the IR sensor, so it actually has to go through this white wire and then go through this blue wire to get to ground. And this yellow pin is right between the resistor and uh, this component. And what that does is it divides the voltage in half. So 5 volts here um, divides it in half depending on how much uh, resistance this component is supplying. Um, there's an equation for this. It's a mathematical reason. But all you need to know is that this resistor stays constant. This one changes. And therefore, this yellow wire also changes. And we can read that. And that's what your software does right here when it does an analog read. So um, that's how this gets hooked up. Uh, these orange and green wires get hooked up as an LED. So uh, if you saw my breadboarding video, it's really simple. We can trace the wires, and we can see we just have a single resistor. And then it goes into the orange wire, out the green wire, and the green wire goes to ground and back into the ground pin of the Arduino. Um, that makes it so that 
the uh, LED, or the infrared LED that this green and orange wire are connected to inside of our, our uh, sensor component, uh, it makes it so that that doesn't have so much current that it blows out that LED. If you forget this resistor and you hook this directly to that orange wire, you will blow out this component and it will be no good to you anymore. So, just a fair warning. Um, uh, the LEDs here, the green and the red ones, they're connected similarly. So, you can trace it from the, the red here. We go down and uh, uh, these actually are not supplying power. I shouldn't have said that. They're not getting power from this red directly. They're getting power from our uh, 8 and 9 pins. So, say we have 8 turned on. We can follow this blue wire down. It'll go through this resistor, slowing down the, the current so that it doesn't blow out the LED, then into the LED, then out and back down to ground. So, this LED will only be on if 8 is set to high. So, if we look at our uh, 8 is green pin, if we go over here to green pin, we see that if the sensor value is greater than 500, it gets set to high, and therefore this one will be on. Uh, the same thing can be said with the red wire, except that's hooked up to pin 9, if you want to trace it through. And you'll see that's what turns on and off the red. Um, that's really kind of it for the components. This is a pretty simple circuit. It might look a little confusing here. Um, if you want to see this represented in a more technical form, I have a schematic also provided that looks like this. So this is how an engineer would look at this uh, this circuit. But uh, in actuality, this is kind of a useful way of looking at it, but um, looking at the breadboard like this is a lot simpler. So I recommend using this view to put together your breadboard. Uh, but it is worth learning the other diagram, too. Um, I hope you find this helpful, and if you have any questions at all, just email me, call me, whatever you need to do. Uh, I want to help you guys get working with these things. So, enjoy.